When's that? On the 3rd uh-huh. of November. Yeah. Where, where, whereabouts do you stop? Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. For uh, three, two nights. Yeah. Um, you don't, do you want all the details of the tour? Well, uh, okay. where, where else do you go for Rock Speak listeners? Yes. I mean, it is said that it's sold out, actually, the tour, That's, so it's rather tantalising so. for them to hear. Okay. Yeah, Edinburgh, Newcastle, Cardiff, mm. Bristol, uh, London, Stoke, Birmingham. Uh, I think I've got them all. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. And um, so, really, what what are we going to hear? I mean, are you going to play new new stuff? You're going to hear Dark Side the Moon um, and a new first half, which we're working on at the moment. Yeah. Of which we've tried two of the numbers in France, and we went to France. And we're now writing another two pieces. Mm-hmm make up an hour or possibly an hour and a quarter mm. for the first set and uh, very hard to translate music into words um, <laughs> but we'll have a go <laughs> very hard though anyway um, it's going well that's that's the main thing yeah. all of us are very encouraged mm-hmm. I believe by the rehearsals mm. and the music we're getting is it very easy it's similar to Dark Side <coughs> of the Moon or? no mm. no uh, it's just that you have as you probably know, you've been through a bad phase. You know, since Dark Side of the Moon, we haven't really done much. And uh, we've been wandering around and trying to sort out what happened with Dark Side of the Moon and all sorts of personal things going on. And uh, before we went away on holiday, rehearsals were getting rather heavy and rather bad. You know, we weren't actually doing anything. Mm. Since we've come back in the last three weeks, we've really got a lot of music down. Mm it's going very well. I'm more confident, actually, in the music we've written now than I was in Dark Side of the Moon, which can't mm. be bad. Mm. Still selling in America. Mm. But, uh, what did I you feel was wrong, then, with it? I mean, I, oh, I, I didn't. nothing wrong. No, I didn't. What I meant to say was that mm. while we were working on the piece, I didn't feel as excited about what we were doing as I do about the, you know, the latest... Mm. Mm pieces for music. Well, it's not a piece, in fact, it's uh, one, two, three at the moment, so it'll be four, I should think. Mm. I just feel more excited about the music that's coming out of our rehearsals now than I did when we were doing Dark Side of the Moon. Mm. And your um, contribution in the new... So hopefully, I yeah, think so. this album will be even better, mm. you know? Mm. When, when will it come out, the album? Well, we're working on it uh, December, January, February. Hopefully March, April, April, let's say. Mm. The idea is to get it out by April, which is about time, because that's two years since it starts, I don't know. I think we'll, we'll definitely get it out by April, because uh, we would have done one English tour with it, possibly some European gigs with it, and then it's much easier to go into studio and record something that you've done on the road. Yeah, yeah. It's Dark Side of the Moon was the first album we did like that, mm. where we actually took it on the road before we recorded it. Mm. Uh, that is one of the reasons why I think that's probably the best record we've made yet. Mm. Whereas before, you know, we always uh, wrote something, recorded it, and then played it live. This It's much better to play it live than record it, because mm. you learn a lot yeah. through playing yeah. live. What, what's your particular contribution in the new... Uh, ah, 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 ah. Having, having been to your lovely little studio at your house, um, where obviously... Did you work on things there? Um, I'm, I'm working. I've only just got that going, actually. Contribution is... Um, actually, one of the songs is Rogers, and uh, another song is... Um, we were working on it together, and Roger's r- written some lyrics. He's, and again, writing lyrics, like, you know, on Dark Side of the Moon, he wrote all the lyrics. Yes. It seems to be that he's now becoming the lyric writer of the group. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the third piece is uh, a, a group thing with, uh, you know, Roger's lyrics. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I haven't actually written anything yet. 
Although I do have a few things to take down for rehearsals mm -hmm. very shortly that we want to try out. So mm -hmm. when you meet, you play uh, a piece to each other? Because it is rather a group thing, isn't it? I mean, one doesn't think of a uh, Floyd composer. I mean, it's a um, group thing. It, yeah, it's the a group. as you say, from Rogers' it's a, lyrics. And it's a group thing. I mean, basically how it works, and usually the best music with, that we get is when uh, we just work together in a rehearsal and everyone, you know, puts an idea. Someone might have a part of a chord sequence or someone might have a few words, whatever it is. Um, and just sort of gets all the pieces of music, all the ideas that everyone has and just... Mm -hmm. uh, between us, sort of form it into a piece of music. Mm. So, uh, but sometimes, you know, someone will come along with the whole thing, words, everything, arrangement. And you, uh, have you ever done that? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, we've all done it. Um, and lots of the things are rejected. It's mm. much harder to get. A, not much harder, but I mean, it's much easier for us to work together than one person trying to persuade the other three. Mm. you know, that mm. Uh, mm. should do a song. I mean, Rogers had plenty of songs that we, I don't think the Floyd will do, but that he recognises probably aren't the type of material that the Floyd would ever want to do, actually. Mm. And the same for me and the same for Dave. And uh, this isn't a bad thing, actually. I mean, there's lots of things all of us want to do on our own anyway. Yeah, I was going to ask about that, actually, that... Um I mean, Dave's gone off and produced Unicorn. And played with Roy Harper. Mm. I mean, he, yeah, he's Unicorn, basically, is what mm. he's done on his own. Mm. Um, well, I played with Roy Harper in Hyde Park and at the concert yeah, there. Yeah. Um, Nick has played... Nick has played with Robert Wyatt. With Robert Wyatt. Yeah. Um, I haven't been involved with any, anybody, mm. but... Uh, I mean, I what, what will you do, in fact? Oh. What would I do? Yes. Or, what... Well, on your, what would be well, your sort of thing when you go? Oh, solo album, mm. most definitely, because there's lots of things I want to do that um, I suspect I could do better by myself than... Mm -hmm. I don't know, that might be presumptuous of me, but I think I could do better by myself than restricting it to a group format, mm. you know. Um, also, just for the sheer enjoyment of not compromising that's what i'd like as well yeah so the mm. mistakes the good things the bad things is all my responsibility mm. Mm. which is nice i mean it's nice to have that um we've been talking about it lately actually about maybe it's about time that the floyd say work for six months as a group mm. and another six months as individuals yeah where yeah. Anything could happen. Maybe two of the members would play together. Maybe we'd form other bands in that six months. Whatever, you know. Mm. You know, like Jeff's airplane, I guess, is the nearest thing. Yeah. To, mm. And I think it's a good idea. I mean, we've been playing for eight years. Yes. Mm. Eight years. Long time. Since you're on top of the pops. And uh, all of us, <laughs> yes. And all of us, I think, have got plans that we want to do that don't necessarily involve working with, with the group. Mm. Mm. And I think if we could get rid of this and release all these things we want to do, it'll help the group as well. Mm. Yeah, I suppose that's the same with any group, that uh, there are the uh, pressures build up, and inevitably, as you say, eight years of time. Uh, pressure, what, which, yeah. Well, I think success brings pressures, doesn't it? Oh, sh sure it does, yeah. Um, it certainly does. Terrible pressures. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, Dark Side of the Moon brought, presumably, pressure. Yes, I, I mean... mean it you hit oil, really, there, uh, financially. Financially, we were suddenly uh, made some money, mm. I guess, and uh, Pink Floyd became a business all of a sudden, rather than a, just a... Mm. Well, it was a business before, but suddenly one was aware that Pink Floyd was becoming a product, you know? Yeah. Well, I was and that a lot of our time and energy was spent hassling about the business side of running a group rather than actually mm. playing, mm. which is not a good thing. Um, so those pressures got worse, 
uh, each of us had pressures on a sort of personal level. Mm. But I mean, what how does one cope with success? Yeah, what are your pressures? Well, my... <laughs> I mean, I, I... Not for me, it was all right. Mm. Um, well, you know what Roger felt, because you yeah. spoke to him. Yeah. Um, now, his, I don't have those kind of feelings of guilt or whatever mm. about success. Um, and how, how do you view success? How do I view success? I'm very happy that uh, Dark Side of the Moon made it. Um, and you have a lovely house that you're restoring. Yeah. In the country. Yeah, I don't it's talk nice about to that. <laughs> No, no, but I mean. Um, I mean, I'd, I, 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 no. I, for that because obviously you're putting a lot of care into it. I mean, you're not sort of moving <laughs> huge landscape <laughs> garden, as well. No, no, no. And that I is mean, obviously a therapy, isn't it? Partly oh, sure. Working on that house. Oh yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's nothing better as to jump on my uh, lawnmower and shoot round the garden. Mm. A very mundane task that doesn't involve thinking, doesn't involve anything really, mm. and that's so sort of relaxation. Mm. Mm. But uh, I'm not sure how I really think about it all, actually. I'm still discovering what I think about money and success, mm. Mm. you know. And I, I think all I'm saying basically is I haven't got quite so much guilt about having a lot of money when there's penniless people walking outside as the mm. others. Mm. I think is the honest answer. Obviously I enjoy it. I mean, it's very nice to be able to have a big house in the country. And it's a standard thing, isn't it, you know? The uh, group makes it, everyone disappears into the country. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, one reads about it every week in the music press. And in fact, for me, it is true. It really has done me a lot of good since mm. I left London. Mm. It really has. Yeah. It's been fantastic. I mean, you're taken as part of the village, there you go, and people... Well, the whole, they yeah. Mind, they? Well, they, I suppose that anyway, they don't know the floor, and I suppose that's... Oh, well, well they, you're no. not in the charts and Gary Glitter. Or no, they expected a whole load of freaks to arrive when they heard we bought the house. They thought we were going to have, you know, mm. they thought the whole family was staying there, maybe hundreds of groupies and everyone roaming about the village. They had all these stupid things. But, I mean, it's... Obviously, they found out that, that isn't the case. Mm. And, uh... It's fantastic living with people like that. Yeah. Because everyone knows each other. I mean, I have a really nice time up there. Yeah. yeah. You get perspective. I don't know. Yeah. I don't they know. They give you a perspective. Perspective? Hmm. And what, how do you mean? Well, I mean, that they, um, they were, you know, they're ordinary, honest people doing, doing their living, going about their living in the country. <laughs> um. Yes. Not, um, you know they can't they couldn't care really who you are i should think they they, they like you for who you are rather than what but you I are hope, rather hope. in london people um if um, a member of pink floyd arrives at a party in london he, it's something different oh i don't think so start, actually no? I, and that on a social thing like that what mm. you're saying i don't probably isn't any different um but then no one knows it's in London, in fact. I mean, Pink mm. Floyd doesn't go anywhere. And uh, everyone's very blasey about it. Luckily, it's nice. Whereas, certainly people, when I went to, uh, out into the country, would, would just sort of actually, you know, come down the house and have a look, expecting to see Gary Glitter or whatever, <laughs> prancing about in the nude in his swimming pool. <laughs> and tourists every Saturday and Sunday afternoon. But, uh, but the actual people who know me, you know, it's totally different. Mm. Mm. Totally different. And I have time to mm. talk to them, which is amazing. I never seem to have time to talk to people in London, with anyone. And when you walk out and into a village there, you don't, you just talk to anybody that you see. Mm. Mm. And it's a totally different thing. And for me, much better than London. But I don't know if it's reality, you see. I think maybe city life is in fact, closer to reality of modern life than living in the country. It is an escape. Because mm. all our problems are stemming from living in um, cities, aren't they? Indeed. So that's yeah. the reality yeah. of the situation, is what's going on 
in London. Uh, what's going on in my village is... Uh, it's the answer to the problems, I believe. Mm. Is the kind of lifestyle that people have out there. But uh, it's not what's happening. Uh, your solo album, I mean, what would that... Having again seen you in that studio and marvelled at the way that you started off little machines playing this and that and then whizzed over and did something here and something there. You've got an incredible effect. Just one person. I mean, would you... Well, would you use that as a basis? Or? That is just for me to try out ideas. It's not to make mm. a finished product mm. and to make demos, basically, and to experiment with things and to put it on tape so that I can then go into a studio. I mean, mm. if, I, if I do a solo album, I mean, that's a question of time, really. I will do one when I've got time. Um, the idea is to do it at home in my studio and play everything myself. Mm. Not that I can play everything, yeah. but just... Yeah. And then go into a studio and do it mm. properly, mm. obviously, with other musicians. Yeah. But... Uh, Who would you like to use? Do you have any idea? I haven't really thought about it. It would depend on... I still... I have no idea what, you know, what I'll do. I want to sort of plan out 45 minutes of music mm. at home. Mm. And that's, you know, do the whole thing at home, reduce it, get it down to... I mean, do it as best as I can on the equipment that I have. Mm. And depending on what it is, mm. then mm. I would decide who to use. Yeah. You know, it depends what the music is. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. It could be very... It could be masses of people, or I could suddenly decide I just want to play piano. Or I don't know, you see. Mm. So I'm interested... Uh, Floyd, as a group, use what, Ron Geeson? Or Geeson on... Um, <coughs> Geeson. Geeson on uh, Adam Hartmiller. Mm. Um, are you going to use anyone on the new album? You know? No, I, no. We only, we only used Ron because none of us could write mm. score. Yeah. So we asked Ron if he could score for brass in the choir. And uh, obviously, knowing Ron, you know, he, his influence came into it, like the introduction. Mm. Mm. And that is really his sort of his piece of music, basically. Mm. Um, but I can't see us on this album, the next album, using anything like brass or choirs or whatever. Mm. So we, won't, we wouldn't use anybody. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, amazing thing in America was the success of that single Money, mm. uh, which wasn't put out here. It was a bit like um, Tubular Bells that was done out in America. Uh. Right. Um, well, that was a decision of uh, Capitol Records in America. Mm. They just said to us, shall we put out, you know, we want to put a single out, we'll use money. And we said, all right, we didn't think about it. Mm. So we didn't think anything would happen. I mean, this was before Dark Side of the Moon really happened. Mm. And it just did, for some reason. Well, I know there's plenty of reasons why it did, actually. Because it's very good. Mm. Why wasn't it put out here? Was but it was interesting, the fact that money made it on the strength of the album, rather than the album making it on the strength of the mm. single, which is usually what happens in mm. America. Mm. So you always release a single. Yeah. Then, yeah. if the single makes it, you can then sell your album full of rubbish. Yeah. And they always with, put uh, a sticker on, don't they? So yeah. It has hit yeah. single ingredient almost. I mean, I mean, it does say includes I mean, hit I mean, not, single. Not everyone does that, but mm. literally that's what does happen. You'll have a hit single, then they'll put that on an album, then just put anything on the rest mm. of the album. Mm. Mm. Just to sell an album. But, uh, yeah, it did make it, and it was played... Well, the reason it made it was because it was on AM radio. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm. before, we'd never been played on anything but FM. Yeah. Mm. So, that, you know, why wasn't that released here? Or would you want it released here? It doesn't worry me at all whether it was released or not. Mm. Mm. Um, I personally don't worry whether a single's going to make it or not. I'm only concerned about albums. I yeah, don't well, think uh, Floyd, Floyd... are the ultimate album. I, I mean, think you're into well, albums and not a single <laughs> band. You see, right, the three-minute three number mm. is not about the Floyd, that is about the song. Mm. 
you can't put across the feeling of the band in three minutes. But I mean, so if we have a good song, that's fair enough. Mm. Mm. But I'm only really interested in the. I mean, I think the music the band creates is more important than, the, mm. say, a three-minute song. That's, that just becomes, I suppose, an ego trip for the writer. This song makes it. Mm. I wonder why, why they didn't put it out. In, in terms of business, there's no, yeah. no point. It doesn't help either way whether you release a single or not. Mm. 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 So, it doesn't matter. I don't know why they didn't. I would have thought they would have done. Considering, you know... Mm. Well, they put out a sort of resume album, didn't they? Well, at least they what? brought your albums back. Uh, oh, the in first a package, two. Yeah. Oh, yes, mm. of course, yeah. Mm. That initiative was again from Capital, I believe, in America. Because mm. they were losing us. I mean, our contract had run out. Mm. So, as always, you know, they had to desperately release everything they've got. Mm. How does the group feel when that happens? Well, we didn't mind. I didn't mind. I did mind at first. I thought, oh no, not here we go again, you know. They and in fact, those two albums probably sold nothing in America. And I think it's perfectly reasonable. Because it was a good price, mm. either they're getting two for the price of one. I think it's reasonable to say, here you are, this is old stuff that the Floyd did five years ago, if you want it. I mean, there's lots of people who haven't got those albums. Mm. They've been deleted and not on the list anymore. So I thought it was fair enough. Would you dread um, them? Would you dread them here bringing back, like they did to Bowie, um, with a, what was it, the Laughing what? Gnome? Um, uh, I think it's called the Laughing Gnome. Um, became, that was one of, during his uh, period when he sounded like uh, Anthony Newley. <laughs> they brought that back and became a hit. Uh, if they know. did that to you I and brought back you those mean, top of the pot. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, what you think, yeah, re release the Emily Play or something. Mm. I would fight it because the see Emily Play's got nothing to do with Floyd even at that time, really. Yeah. So, uh, I think we'd be able to handle it. <laughs> as, as we always do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you did you hear the new that Sid Barrett double album? I mean, did you ever did you get hold I of that and cer- see it? I certainly did because I worked on the second one mm. with Dave. Mm. Um, as Roger and Dave did the first one, yeah. and Dave and myself attempted to do the second one. So there again, I think the reasons for releasing that was a, probably a money thing in America. Again, that came from America. You know, they wanted to release Sid Barrett. Mm. All because of Dark Side of the Moon. I'm sure they suddenly thought, oh, we must get everything out. Um, I think they were appalling, the two records, musically. Mm. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't like the, them. Oh, I don't... I can't imagine anyone liking them. Mm. I mean, musically, they're atrocious. The songs are great, most of the songs are great, but performed so badly. The sound is in, was impossible, impossible to get any sound because of what, you know, state Sid was in. Mm. Um, there again, you know, I suppose people are interested just to see, at least it tells a lot of people what, how Sid is now and where he's at, or how he was when he made them. Because mm. he's been a ra- yeah. rather sort of, Albatross around the neck, yes, yeah. in a way, um, through no fault of Floyd, or, but it's a weird yeah. thing that people are sort of taking him up or something. Oh, yeah, a legend in his own lifetime, mm. yeah, uh, a, li- a living Jim Reed, yes, in fact, in fact, when he left the band, I think that. I, think, I mean, suddenly the band got much, much better. Not only because we were playing with a maniac who, mm. in his own weird way, was trying to destroy... Not trying to destroy the band, but he had some weird thing of trying to make it as difficult for us to play as possible. But, I mean, since he left, it forced the three of us, and Dave had just joined, mm into thinking, well, what can we do now? Because before we relied on his songs. And since 
he left. I mean, I think the band has just improved so much. Mm. Mm. It was a good thing. The music got better. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Mm. Much better. Uh, with your own, so are you saying it, it, it'll be two years since the last, aren't you know, between yeah, albums? Right. Uh, do you think that's too long? Or? Yes, mm. definitely. I think a year is probably too long. Um, it's too. It is much too long. I mean, two years. I mean, because it's boring. I mean, as I said, after Dark Side Moon, we all went through a very weird state. Mm. That's the reason why we haven't we haven't done any work for a year, mm. really. I mean, we've just been rushing about with all sorts of talking about schemes and plans and this and that, but avoiding the issue, which was to get together and play and go out and mm. tour and make albums. And it went it went very badly, mm. and it's now going right up again. You know, but two years, certainly two years is much too long. Mm. That's too long. So now you're going to do this tour, then you'll go in the studio. Yeah, we'll do the tour, and we'll go in the studio, make the album, and then we'll go to the States. Mm. After that, um, come back, maybe try and do a... F I'd like to do another film score. Yeah, because you, uh, you have... A That's another thing I would like to do, if, if we ever do this idea of six months on and six months off. That's another thing I'd like to do, would be a film school, mm. actually. Um, anyway, we come back from the States and then maybe Europe, and then back to the States again. And Twice then we next year. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, and then we stop there. We haven't actually, we're not gonna do any, you know, we're not gonna book anything after that. Because mm. usually we tie ourselves up for a whole year. Well, this time we're going to say, right, by next summer, we won't do any more bookings or whatever. Mm. So it gives us more freedom to decide what we'll do. We're lucky that we've reached a position where we can do that. Mm. You know? mm. And I think it will save the band. I think if we go on working, as we have done before, I think the band would split up mm. quite rapidly, actually. Because we're all growing up. <laughs> yeah. We're getting older. You know, and uh, we need to branch off and do various things mm. to keep sane. Well, so you, you think when, a, when a band grows up, they... Well, grows up, I don't... <laughs> well, age, ages, I mean, then. And, uh, <laughs> ages, mm, yeah. Mm. I don't know, I'm only speaking for our setup. Mm. I think if we force ourselves to work with each other for a year, and don't allow all these other things that we want to do. I mean, I haven't... I know Dave would probably love to go off and play a totally different kind of music in another band. He may do not... He may... I mean... Well, I, he played that's what Steel I, on uh, Unicorn Hall, didn't he? Yeah. I feel there's lots of ways of playing that he'd like to do that he doesn't do in the Floyd. Mm. Um, I think Roger could get into all sorts of things that doesn't involve even rock and roll at all, mm. possibly. You know, like theatre or anything. All these things that, if we don't do the things that we want to do, then we'd, we'd split up. Mm. But I think a working relationship where we do work for six months and then could be very, very good for all of us. And very, very good for the band and probably very, very good for our fans. Because mm. mm. the energy level would be so much higher then. Yeah. yeah. And uh, consequently we would play better, write better and everything. Mm. So it'll be for the good of everybody. I suppose the fans might complain this time that, you know, you play these halls through no fault of your own, but uh, not many of them can get to see you. Um, well, no, I mean, this, what, what can we do? We either sort of stay in Edinburgh for two weeks. Mm. Um, and it's a disaster for us to ever play a place more than about three times. Because uh, as, as you go on and on in the same place, I mean, the energy levels get lower and lower, and the gigs get worse and worse. Mm. And uh, in our experience... Why is that? 
I don't... I th it's just very... For us, it's very hard to perform in the same place. I don't know, I guess it's just... The moving in uh, a new city or whatever. Mm. And we played in Paris for three days. And we had we could have played in Paris for much, much longer, but after three days, we said, that's it. We just couldn't do anymore. But then we could get up, get on a plane and go to another city and play mm. a really good gig. I think, psychologically, for us, it just couldn't make doing more than about three gigs. It's very hard, for example, for us to play in the daytime. Mm. Yeah. They wanted us to play at three o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Where was that? But at Wembley. Mm. But uh, we're not going to because none of us could face the idea of getting up on stage at three o'clock in the afternoon and playing. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it would seem slightly unreal, so, I should think. <clears throat> I, um, does, I don't know what the answer is to... Uh, Obviously in London, you know, a lot of people will be able to see us because we're doing, it's a big place, 8,000 a night. Mm. Places like Edinburgh, there's not much we can do unless we, uh, I mean, we went around the whole of England, well, we, I say, we didn't, but we had Arthur going around the whole of England looking for big places to play in. Mm. And there's nothing in England, nothing mm. at all. Rick Wright, uh, very pleasant he is too, and good luck to the Floyd on their tour.